On this channel, we look at the three critical screenwriting skills, story, script, and sales. Today, we focus on script as I'm honing my style with the help of Taylor Sheridan. I'm Karel Seegers. I sold my first produced script to Belgian TV at age 17. Fortunately, I've learned a lot since, and I'm sharing it all with you here for free on this channel. In a series of videos, I copied a screenplay of Sicario word for word. I didn't come up with the idea of copying someone else's work. Uh, Stephen King, Joan Didion, Shakespeare, and others did that before me. The method is also part of the immersion course, and at the end of this video, I'll have some goodies for you. If you missed the previous days, check out the playlist as we've learned a few things already. Yesterday, we had that awe-inspiring sequence from Sicario where we crossed the Mexican border twice. Today, we're closing the first half of Act 2 as we approach the story's midpoint reversal sequence. The first scene we're going to copy is the arrival of the Chevys back at the El Paso Army Intel Center, followed by the scene where Kate confronts Matt. There we go. El Paso. Uh, it doesn't say El Paso. You know what? I'm going to leave it because it is El Paso. Now you know that there are indeed operators, the Delta people. That's a sloppy slug line without any punctuation there. Which to me tells me that this is indeed not a script that was supposed to go out. You know how sometimes production companies send scripts for consideration for the Academy Awards, I don't think this is such a copy. So this is interesting. So sirens, and then she says, I don't hear anything. Confuses me. If you get this, put it in the comments, what I need to understand here. There's a great line of dialogue in the film that's not here. Because that's what happens when you cut the head off the chicken or something along those lines. The film doesn't have the racial reference and didn't need it, I don't think. In the film, she says it was not her call. Why? Do we need it? I don't know. That's uh, literary language, but I like it. She doesn't say just Mexico. She says we were in Mexico. That's a stronger statement. It, there's a subtext of this is how these things go. This is where we're at now. We were in Mexico. In the film we get the point more quickly. I believe in the movie it is Reggie who calls Matt and I think it's better the original way, Macy calling him. She's ultimately the hero. And he would, and she would. I think she would have the courage. So why do I keep the um, why do I keep the slug line as prompted by final draft? Because it's the easiest way of doing it. It's also complete, saves us time, and there's no downside to keeping it that way. I think it's a great response by Matt. This feels very serious, indicating that for him this is all a game. It's a great point, great moment. She doesn't know yet what she will know. So that's the correct way, but I think I'm gonna have to accept this one. Everybody does it. His name is Fausto Arcon, El Verdugo. Every day across that border, people are kidnapped, 
or killed by his hand or with his blessing. To find them would be like discovering a vaccine. Great piece of dialogue written long before the pandemic. In the movie, it's Matt who asks, are you afraid of the dark? I would have done this, this differently. I mean, we're at the end of the sequence, doesn't matter all that much. But here is a final paragraph of this sequence, essentially from Reggie's point of view. And this movie is about um, Kate and Alejandro much less about Reggie. I mean, Reggie has a, some arc in he, here in this scene. He's learned and accepted that what they're doing may be necessary. So he's maybe now where Kate was at the end of Act One. Uh, still, I believe it's good to keep your point of view anchored. And I don't think we have this moment in the film. I don't think we ever go to Reggie and be in his point of view in the way this is described here. I'm going to leave it there for today. It's a nice uh, point to end. And I feel that the next sequence, starting at the bottom of page 52, beginning 53, is essentially a mid-sequence. So you could argue that this is a five-act structure, um, if you want to call it that, or um, maybe in a nine-sequence structure, or in any case, it is the mid-sequence. and. It's a, it's a meaty mid-sequence, and that's why I would call it an act in its own right. Um, tomorrow we're going to have that, and it's an interesting sequence. It takes us a little bit out of the action that we've had so far. Um, introduces John Bernthal in the film as an actor who has been in several of um, uh, Taylor Sheridan's work on screen. Um, Wind River is the other one. Sicario is a tight script, yet we still find places where lines or beats were omitted in the film. What does this tell you? Perhaps that you can probably cull another 10% of your script too. Immediately we encounter the slug line without any punctuation. It's more proof that Sheridan is not a perfectionist. You know what? If he had been, he probably wouldn't have been able to complete the massive amount of scripts he delivered over the past 10 years or so. Sicario is a darkly realistic screenplay, and Villeneuve is a fairly serious director. Yet Matt brings energy and the occasional light relief. His banter with the Deltas may be politically incorrect, but it does offer lighter notes here and there. And do not underestimate how much audiences appreciate moments of levity. It doesn't have to be laugh out loud fun, wit and sarcasm go a long way. The character of Reggie is black, and in the screenplay, we're being reminded of this a few times. I don't believe any of that survived the finished film, and a possible reason could be that it avoids thematic confusion. We're not distracted by it. This is not what the movie is about. I think it was a smart move. If you're going to include social issues, make sure they're somehow connected to the central theme. The plight of the Mexican family is certainly connected, but Reggie's race, probably not. At the immigration warehouse, um, another sloppy slug, by the way, Kate calls Matt for an explanation after Reggie insists. In the film, Reggie calls Matt. I somehow prefer the original version in the script, even if the final scene makes Reggie stronger, uh, because that is at the expense of our focus on Kate. Perhaps the reasoning is that she doesn't really want to question Matt any longer because she's more committed than Reggie by now. But that's contradicted when, moments later, she sides with Reggie and threatens to leave. What do you think? Any ideas? Put them in the comments. In the video today, and it's probably not the last time, you saw me hesitate between accepting a slug line prompted by Final Draft or the one printed in the script. Sometimes Sheridan's version is longer or shorter than the one suggested by Final Draft, and the advantage of sticking with the wording you've used before, that's the one prompted by Final Draft, is consistency. It will also help the producer when they run a location report from the script. Because when you keep choosing the same prompt, you will always have the same location. So bottom line is, 
When you're writing a spec script, choose whatever looks most elegant or take these considerations into account and choose for yourself. Earlier, I pointed out that Sheridan is generous with commas, but he could use still more. The correct use of direct address requires a comma on either side of the person addressed. Take a line like, look man, we have a boss. Technically, this requires two commas, but in this example, no grandmothers are being eaten, so I guess it's not such a big deal. Just keep in mind that there are instances where incorrect use actually changes the meaning, or you can just stick to the rule. Typically, we keep dialogue concise, particularly in army circles, as military dialogue is usually kept to a strict minimum. But when Reggie asks, where were you? Kate doesn't reply, Mexico. She answers with the full sentence, we were in Mexico. It stands out and it reinforces the subtext that this was a very big deal. And this is an example of how you can make a sentence like this stand out by generally sticking to concision. Anything notable that you learned from today's script that I didn't pick up? Tell me in the comments. Again, I've compiled the seven insights from today and you can download the list from the link below. Have you started copying your favorite script yet? If you need help choosing, Make life easy for yourself and just enroll for Immersion Script. I've selected scenes from about 20 great scripts for you to copy and transcribe. In addition, you'll also be guided in writing a synopsis for a feature and a TV pilot. Join today and I'll give you 50% off. Everything you need is in the notes below. Questions? Contact me via the contact link or just comment on this video. Voila. If you feel inspired, please support me by subscribing and clicking the bell so you know when there is more. Happy watching, happy writing. Cheers.